good morning, evening, and afternoon. Um, right now we are going to have a look at a basic bit of coding that you can do with the scanner. Um, it's going to be sort of a Madlib project, uh, and you can always expand it however you like. Uh, it's an assignment in one of my classes, so um, use it as a guideline for that as well. Okay, so let's start out with a new class in the folder or project that I wish. Uh, we'll call it Madlib. And we will create our public static method by clicking on that box. So here's our main method. Uh, and we're going to start out by creating a scanner to read input. But before we even do that, let's make a comment at the top with a double star. You press enter in Eclipse and it creates this nice layout. And that is a Java doc comment. And we're going to use this to generate uh, some information about our project. So we'll call this madlib.java with a purpose to take user input and place it in a strategic locations within a story. Okay, so we have our program, we have our purpose, we have our author, uh, and you know maybe we'll include a date. And today is 10-4, I believe, yes. Okay, so uh, let's start out. We'll make a scanner. And if you want to name this input, uh, scan is just something I've developed uh, as my scanner name over the years. Um, but maybe we'll name this input to clarify it. Name again is just, it must be a valid Java identifier, and that's about it. We're reading from standard input. Uh, and so you'll notice we have an error, uh, and that's because we haven't imported the scanner package. And to do that, we can type something at the top, or we can just click on this little area right here, import scanner from java.util. The scanner class is now accessible through the java.util package. So now we have a warning, and that's because we haven't used the input variable yet. Uh, we also haven't closed our scanner, so let's go ahead and do that at the bottom. And we should always do that just to whenever we're done taking input so that we don't have any memory leaks. Um, now, before I ask for input, I want to maybe prompt the user, because otherwise they'd have no idea that I'm looking for input. So what I'll say is... Uh, Please enter a verb in the past tense. And here we might say, maybe it'll be a print statement. And now we can actually take in some input. So let's make a string called verb1. And you can name it whatever you'd like. I'm naming it verb1 for, for clarity here. Um, but you can, if something's more clear to you, you can certainly use that. Now, what I'm going to go for is string verb1 uh, is equal to input dot next line. So we're reading in until the next carriage return, uh, the next line, line break, line feed, um, and then we're storing that result, whatever it happens to be, it's some string, we're storing it in verb1. Now let's, uh, I'm going to copy this for expediency's sake, and so let's say I'll enter a noun. And we'll call it noun1. But aside from that, the input is going to be the same. The way we read the input is going to be the same. We're just taking the next line. So if we have two of these, we'll be reading input twice. And so now, one thing that I can say is, okay, well, let's, let's use this information. 
so I will write something of the sort. Um, let's see. The dog. Uh, and then we'll add a verb in. Verb one into the store. We'll have a space here. And then we'll say, we'll just get some uh, good spacing in so that we can read all of this. Plus, let's say, to grab some, and then we'll say noun one. And so now we have this little bit of a story. Uh, so let's see how this plays out. Please enter a verb in the past tense. Oh, let's say swim. And enter a noun. Uh, and I should probably have said plural, but uh, to grab some rice, let's say. And so it says the dog swam into the store to grab some rice. And we certainly need a space right here. And then it will correct our input here. Uh, I could also do something like this, where I have a backslash n backslash t to have some interesting formatting. So let's run this again. And again, uh, this time I'll say uh, sauntered. And this time I'll say um, cheese. And now we see the dog sauntered into the store to grab some cheese. And this cheese is on the next line because of the backslash and escape character. And it's tabbed in because of the backslash t escape character. And you can format this any way you want. You can print out multiple statements. Uh, but the assignment that I gave was to have a six input Mad Lib with maybe about a paragraph or two of output, um, you know, with some variance on you can have more than one or more than six inputs if you want or more than a couple paragraphs. But um, mostly it's just an exercise in using a scanner, saving the input to a variable and then using that variable in output. Uh, so that's a rundown of the project. Notice I've closed at the end. And the last thing you'd want to do is you'd want to say, okay, well, maybe I have a comment here. Input prompting and reading begins here. And then maybe here I might say output a story using the stored input from above. And now I have very clear delineations of where certain sections start using my comments. And maybe I'll write here, close the scanner. Okay. Although that's relatively obvious at that point. So have a great day and uh, have fun with this. Make it your own.